What's going on guys? I'm Max Lingworth. I'm a chess grandmaster here to show you how Ian Napomnishi, the World Championship challenger to Magnus Carlsen for the 2021 World Championship match, is likely to play his openings with the white pieces. We're going to look into the openings that he has played, especially in 2021 so far, in his games in the lead up to this World Championship match. So let's get right into it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, and especially if you're new guys, definitely consider subscribing. So to begin, for this game here, we can see that Nepo primarily is an E4 player. I happen to have a lot of his games. I think if we count the total, it's about 1,500 or even more than 1,500 of his games here to go off of as to what he has played so far and what he might play therefore in his subsequent games. But he's primarily a 1e4 player. This was his main move also in his childhood. And of course, we're going to look deeper into how he's played against some of the major options of Black's disposal. And I'll try to focus a little bit more on some of the lines that Carlson has played himself in his games, given this video is to some extent outlining some of the options that Nepo might play in this match against Carlson when Nepo has the white pieces. So if we take e5, the most common move at higher levels, well, the move that Nepo has played historically has been the move knight f3. And then after knight c6, he's been mainly a Roy Lopez player with the move bishop to b5. And especially in 2021, this has been his main move, just playing a mainline Roy Lopez. He has played a lot of other systems as well. In fact, he had a game against uh, Magnus Carlsen in the Norway chess very recently. In fact, he had two games against Magnus Carlsen very recently in Norway chess 2021. So this was Nepo's last classical tournament before the 2021 World Championship match. So it makes sense that when you're playing tournaments just before the match, that you don't want to just give away all of your preparation and all of your best ideas, because you want to save them for the match, right? So in these games, in the first game, the classical one they played, Nepo actually went for the uh, Italian game with Bishop to C4. Uh, this way playing against Carlsen and that game went bishop c5 and again probably not to give away his preparation he didn't play his usual approach of putting the pawn on d3 and playing like a modern Italian but he played a more direct approach with d4 and going for this uh, Steinitz Zuckertort attack with e5 I think it's actually a Steinitz Sveshnikov attack but yeah the game ultimately ended in a draw where Carlsen didn't have any real problems in maintaining the balance in uh, in these lines uh, so I think it's unlikely that Nepo is going to play this way against Carlsen in the actual match. Uh, so in the Armageddon game, uh, so if you're wondering what is an Armageddon game, basically in this Norway chess tournament, if the classical game ended in a draw, then the players would play an Armageddon to determine who basically is the winner between the two of them. And in that game, Nepo played the move knight c3 and went for this bishop c4. Uh, actually, in the game, Carlsen played knight c6, not knight to f6. But yeah, Nepo played bishop c4, which he normally doesn't play. But again, playing this sort of system just to hide preparation. But in the game, Carlsen played the move knight a5 and did go on to win the game after picking up the bishop pair where Nepo's opening play was perhaps not the most convincing. But again, playing this thing to hide his, uh, his real preparation by playing these sidelines. So it's an important point to keep in mind when looking at these games. Do not just look at just purely the most recent games. Because normally when you're preparing for an opponent, you just look at their most recent games and you see, okay, this is what they played the last 20 or so games. So they're probably going to do it against me as well, right? But for a preparation of a World Championship match, it's a bit different because, well, you know that your opponent is going to be looking at your most recent games. So you may end up doing something a little bit different and perhaps have a different repertoire that you play before the match to what you play in the actual match. So on that basis, I think that if we're looking purely on historically what Nepo has played in the past the most often, then definitely the Royal Lopez would be the most likely system. But let's dive a little bit deeper into some of the options he's played and what he might go for in the match. So let's take the move a6 first of all. I will get to the Berlin a little bit later. But if we take a6, bishop a4, this is what Nepo has normally been playing. And he's had a few games with d3, but because he last played in 2017, it seems very likely that he will go castles. And after bishop e7, which is a move that Carlsen normally plays. Well, there's actually been quite a few recent games between 
cast against Nepomnishi, and I think I recognize these games as being part of the 2020 uh, Champions Chess Tour, where you know, there were a series of tournaments that were being played, uh, and then there was eventually a final between Carlson and Nepomnishi, if I remember correctly, to determine who wins the tour. And Carlson, I think, ended up very narrowly winning that match, if I remember correctly, but it was very close and went right to the wire. And in these all four of these games, it's interesting to note that Nepo played this move of pawn to d3, which actually plays more often than the modern main line of rookie one. So if you're wondering what the idea of d3 is, basically the point is that with rookie one, you're playing more to kind of push ahead with c3 and d4 and try to take the center directly. But by playing the move d3, you're saying, well, I'm just going to defend this pawn immediately and kind of keep rookie one in reserve where I might decide to play a move that maybe is more useful than rookie one in the d3 structure. So after d6, Nepo has played a3 and this is how quite a few of his games against Carlsen went after castles and knight c3. So the idea of a3 is just to make sure that if black does play knight a5, that you can retreat back with bishop a2 and keep your bishop on this nice uh, long diagonal as such, without getting traded by the knight, which would be very nice for black. And after bishop e6, there was actually a very instructive game between Napomnishi against Ding in the 2020 FIDE candidates. Keep in mind that the way that uh, Napomnishi actually qualified for the, can for the World Championship match against Carlsen is actually by winning the 2020 candidates. But because of the situation with COVID, the tournament was split in two halves, where the first seven rounds were played in, I think, April 2020, if I remember correctly. And then the second half tournament was played in April 2021. Now, this game against Ding was played in the first half of the event, and it gives a good indication of how much Nepomnishi's uh, preparation has improved in the last one or two years. Because previously, Nepo used to be a very sort of tactical, more creative player. He'd often play different sidelines, just trying to set problems to the opponent. So he's a very tricky and dynamic sort of player. That's his natural style. But in this game, rather than playing his usual knight a2 and c4, he'd been playing a lot in previous games, he played this move, rook takes a2 against Ding, showing a certain flexibility, being willing to play a bit differently to how he had previously. Even though he had very good results with knight c3 takes a2 in the past, he actually beaten some very strong players like Aronian twice and Wojtacek and Inarkiv with this knight a2 move. He figured, well, Ding probably has something prepared. He expects me to go for this because I won game after game with it. So he plays a different approach and ends up winning a very nice game against Ding with this plan of basically trading on f6 here so his knight can go to d5. And then later on he was able to get some very nice pressure where he ended up playing c4 later on and just having this sort of good knight against a bishop that's not really doing that much on f6. And that was definitely an important win on the way to Nepomnishi winning the candidates because I believe before this going into this event that the top seeds were Caruana and Ding Liren. But they both had somewhat rough starts to the tournament where I think, uh, if I remember correctly, I think Ding started with 3 out of 7 and Caruana had 3.5 out of 7, which made it quite difficult for them to come back and really contend for the first place in the second half of the candidates. But anyway, we can sort of see that Nepo has had quite good results with this D3 move. But in a couple of recent games, Carlsen played this move Rook B8 against Nepomnishi, and there were a few games in the 9D5 take take where it seems that Black held the draw about too much trouble when uh, Carlsen was able to kind of reorganize his piece with bishop f6, bring the knight over, and well, let's just have a very solid structure, and both the games did end in a draw. So, and also there was a Carlsen game where Carlsen actually played knight a5 and played his accelerated knight a5 c5 plan, using the fact that maybe Carlsen is not the most useful move, strictly speaking, in the fight for the d5 square. So, in any case, we can see that, well, there have been some games already between these players, there was also a game in November where Carlson played d6 against Nepo, but he did go on to lose that game. Uh, so we can sort of see that Nepo really likes his d3 move, and it has brought him fairly good results for the most part. In fact, it gives a score of 70% for White in his games. So definitely one of his stronger systems in his disposal. And that is one reason why Carlson may choose to play something a little bit different. Actually, there have been some games with Carlson's where he's actually played the move Knight takes e4 including against Nepomnishi going for this uh, open Roy Lopez. I don't think Carlson will go for this because he doesn't normally play this system, but it's kind of interesting to know that Nepo has only scored uh, one and a half out of three, so three draws from this system, which suggests it's a line that, of course, is quite decent standing for Black and could also be a little bit unpleasant for him. 
But I think it's much more likely that Carlsen goes for the Berlin with knight to f6. Because that's what Carlsen normally plays more often anyway, from what I've seen in his more recent games. And also, Nepo has kind of changed his systems a lot more against the Berlin, whereas against a6, he's sort of been a lot more consistent in how he's played it, suggests he's much more comfortable in those positions. So I remember Nepo normally goes Castles, knight e4. And lately, he's been mainly playing this move of d4, but he's been playing it with a lot of different interpretations, I guess, for two reasons. One, that the Berlin is just very hard to prove an advantage against, even if you play all the best moves. So it often means it makes sense to play some sort of shortcut or some alternative trying to catch out the opponent. And also, again, because he probably expects Carlsen to play the Berlin, because Carlsen has been relying on the Berlin a lot in his last few World Championship matches. For example, in the two World Championship matches that Carlsen played against Anand in 2013 and 2014. Well, Carlsen used the Berlin quite successfully in both of those matches against Anand. So for that reason, well, there's a position I think we're, we're somewhat likely to see in a match with Carlsen. There's some chance he'll rely on the Berlin. And now Nepos normally plays the move bishop c6 and d takes e5. And he's been doing this in quite a few high-level games with very good results, where he just plays knight to c3. In fact, he had a game very recently against Kayakin in this same Norway chess tournament, where he just played the main line with h3, h5. End up winning quite a nice game here, just playing bishop f4. This is all pretty standard theory, bishop e7. He also beat Nakamura in a game earlier this year. I think it might be a blitz game or a rapid game. But yeah, this line with bishop e6, knight g5 is one that... Objectively, this is completely fine for black. You know, the engine will say that if you play correctly with bishop b4 and play for opposite colored bishops, the white doesn't have any sort of advantage. At the same time, practically, it's a sort of position where white does certainly have the easier position to play with, you know, more space and somewhat better coordination, as the black king is currently stuck in the center. Although with the bishop on e6, not that easy for white to open up with e6. But anyway, this is a line where, uh, well, we can say Nepo has scored two and a half out of three. It's fairly comfortable in these sort of positions. And of course, there are a lot of ways to play the Berlin. One is not limited to playing the king e8 and h5 approach I just, just showed you here. But at the same time, we can say that this is the main line and it's the one that if we take the most common move on each turn, this is what Nepo has played the most often. He's also played some other moves where he's recently played a move bishop to a4 in some games, but I think that these games were nearly all blitz and rapid games. So I think that it's probably unlikely that he plays a sort of surprise weapon in an actual world championship match. And he also has had some games with d5 and playing this line where it appears you sack a piece, but you actually get the piece back with a4. And I mean, his games have mostly been draws here. So again, because most of the games he played here are rapid, that's something to factor in that what you might play in, let's say, a rapid tournament or in a blitz game like TitledTuesdayChess.com is likely to be quite different to what you'll do in an actual world championship match. So again, I don't really put too much weight into these particular games here. But it is worth noting, of course, that Nepo has played this in a lot of different ways. He's also played a move rookie one, but it seems again that it's a move that he plays more when he just wants to make some kind of solid draw or to play some very like low risk type of system. And he actually played this against Carlsen in a game in 2020 that ended in a draw where Blacks went 95 castles, Bishop F6, and, and it wasn't really anything special for White. So the other approach that Nepo often goes for against the uh, Berlin is to move D3. But I noticed he hasn't played this d3 move since uh, 2020, actually. In 2021, he's exclusively been playing the move castles, but kind of mixing it up and playing this castles move a lot of different ways as such. So if we Nepo does play d3, then probably is going to be likely to follow it up with something like, uh, as I just wait for my thing to work, here we go. I think he's probably likely to follow up with either a move like knight bd2, because that's what he's played most often in the past. When knight, the dear knight bd2 is kind of keeping the option of playing c3 castles, but trying to avoid some ideas like d5 or knight d4 that might be possible if white changes the move order. Or he might go bishop c6 and just play these very strategic positions where objectively, of course, black is fine, but you can make the argument that black's structure is a little bit less flexible and that white's plans are maybe a little bit more straightforward by comparison. But that's probably a good moment to wrap up the coverage of the Roy Lopez, because it's true that there are a lot of other lines that Nepo has also played a lot in the past. In fact, I remember many years ago, his favorite system was actually the Scotch game. And this is one that 
Generally, it's given him very good results. He has a 69% score historically. But I notice he hasn't really played it much in 2021. Now, it could be because he's saving up his preparation for the match, because he does have a lot of experience. I think that in his kind of chaotic positions that can often arise in the scotch, let's say with knight f6, knight c3, b c3, e5, in these kind of positions that arise after queen e7, queen e2, and knight d5 are definitely very murky and very unclear, which is the sort of thing that may well play more to Nepo's strengths than Carlson's, relatively speaking, between the players. Where Nepo normally played a move c4 in the past, but he kind of stopped playing it for the most part because the lines have been sort of worked out to equality in that case. So in the last couple of years, he's actually mainly switched to playing this move h4. And actually, he's had some decent results with it. The idea of h4 being that you are kind of preparing to kick this, uh, this knight away, but you also, depending on what they do, can play bishop g5 to hit the queen. In special case, say they go bishop a6, sometimes you can even... Like, after they meet c4, bishop a6 later. Sometimes they even lines where you can swing the rook over and attack the bishop. So you can really figure from this, it's a very unclear and complex line. One where it's kind of important to do some good homework with the engine beforehand if you want to play this way as white. So that's something that definitely could be a possibility. And, of course, there's also moves like bishop c5 that have also been played where you know, Nepo likes to go knight to c6. And he's normally played this queen f6, queen f3 again. Heading for positions that are not really very standard, but with the point being that, well, you're likely to have these double pawns, actually for both sides most likely. So definitely a position where Nepo can show his creative flair and try to outplay the opponent. And as I mentioned before, he also has played things like the Italian game with Bishop to C4, and he's actually done this in quite a few games in 2021, albeit not as much as the move Bishop to B5. But after Bishop C5, yeah, he used to mainly play the castles and d3 move order and only then play to move c3 on the next turn but more recently he's been playing knight c3 knight c3 knight 6 d3 which can have the advantage in certain positions you can choose to delay to move castling which he used to do as a teenager but i think in this case probably more likely that he will just castle and just play this very classically you know rookie one or h3 but there aren't really enough games he played here to really determine what he's most likely to go for but of course, it's an option. This is one of the main theoretical battlegrounds at a high level, this uh, position. And so it's one where also there are a lot of different possible move orders. But I feel like this kind of strategic maneuvering battle may not necessarily play to Nepo's strengths in terms of maximizing his chances for success against Carlsen. And then finally, I did notice that in a few recent games, Nepo did play this move of pawn to f4, playing King Scambit. But he basically, he was only playing it in blitz games and generally against players not as strong as himself. So again, I think it's unlikely that he will go for this in an actual match. Uh, I would very be very surprised. Now, the other major system that Carlsen plays is the Sicilian. And, well, we may recall that in the 2018 match against uh, against Caruana, that Carlsen was actually relying on the Sveshnikov. So knight f3, knight to c6. And then after d4, so this is the Sveshnikov, take, take, knight f6, knight c3, and e5. And that's something that could very well be a potential battleground for the match. Because there were a couple of games between Nepo and Carlsen in 2020 and 2021, where I think Nepo didn't handle this in the most convincing way. So after knight db5 and d6, so in their most recent games, Nepo has mainly played the move bishop g5 against Carlsen. Let's play through a few of the moves from their game just so you get an idea of what they've done before, because that gives certain indication of the games they've played previously as to what might happen in the actual match and what potential weaknesses might be of the players. So Nepo goes knight d5. He likes this positional line where you take on f6 and just have the very nice outpost with the knight on d5. And in the past, when Nepo was younger, he played the move c4 quite a lot, and that generally gave him quite good results. But more recently, he switched to playing the move c3. Again, of course, nowadays with engines, the top players all will change their opening systems at least a little bit and sort of add systems to their repertoire or change lines. And that's because, well, if you play the same thing every time at a 2700 plus level, your opponents will see that and just prepare the top line of the engine and just equalize very easily against you. So it's very important to be flexible as a top level player in order to keep your opponents guessing and to find ways to get in positions where they might be uncomfortable or maybe don't remember what they are meant to do in order to maintain the balance. So after this, well... The Carlsen game, well, Carlsen played this move knight e7, uh, whereas more often normally I think Carlsen goes like bishop g5 and rook b8 kind of systems. 
uh, all castles in rook b8. But it was this game, yeah, where he went 97 against Nepomnishi. And he did uh, win that game. Though I'm not sure if it's necessary because of the opening. But I remember looking at this game, it was quite a well-played game by Carlson. But Carlson managed to outplay his opponent from ultimately an equal position. And I think also, uh, yeah, there was actually a game where Nepo did play to move C4 against Carlson in December 2020. But in that game, I think that Nepo didn't really get anything out of the opening. You know, he played this move of G3. And then Carlson played H5, and the play just became very sort of dry, and basically with no real pawn breaks for either side. It was just a very solid draw. Now, Nepo has also played the move Knight to D5 in some recent games. In fact, this was his almost exclusive move. In fact, it was his exclusive move in 2019. So it's possible he may end up playing some system like this, and you know, Carlson has played both Knight E7 and Knight B8 in World Championship matches. If we take Knight B8, then yeah, Nepo has played... A few different moves, like A4 mainly, but also C4 in a recent game. Though since he played C4 in a blitz game, it's probably more likely that he does play A4 and goes for these lines like Bishop D2 and A5. Although since his results in his line haven't been that great, he hasn't really got that good of positions out of the opening with this plan. Well, it's kind of interesting to see what he will go for. I mean, it's interesting for me to note that he hasn't really played the Rossolimo in a very long time. The last time he played it was in 2018. So, I suppose in theory, there's something that could be prepared, but again, these sort of strategic positions probably come a bit more naturally to Carlson than Nepo if we're talking purely stylistically. So, I think in this case, yeah, probably if C5 were perhaps most likely to see an open Sicilian, unless Nepo decides to prepare something very specific for the match. Uh, I mean, I guess Knight C3 is a move that he played a bit in 2020, but whether he'll go for this is another question, because there have been a few games between Nepo and Carlson. There were two games where Carlson played e5 and got a win and a draw, respectively. And then there was also a game where Carlson just played g6, transposed to an accelerated dragon, and that game also ended in a draw as such. That's a line where Nepo's results lately haven't been super convincing, so... As we can sort of see, I think that if we summarise e4, I think we can say that Nepo has, well, got definitely a few different openings he can play. He does seem to have a little bit more breadth against e4, e5 than against e4, c5, though. Against e4, c5, he seems to be very loyal to playing the open Sicilian and has a couple of different ways he plays it. I guess while moving on, I should also cover what he likes to do against the knight off because Carlson is someone who does have the knight off in his repertoire as well. It's not his main system, but it's definitely a system that he can play. And in this case, well, Nepo has played a lot of different moves and this may also be based on the fact that Nepo also mainly plays the knight off as black against 1e4, as I'll get to in the black video at a later stage. But at this point, the main move that Nepo has been playing lately in 2021 has been the move of bishop to g5. And of course, bishop g5 is a very direct approach, and it can also lead to some quite irrational positions. So I think that this very direct approach can sort of suit Nepo's style quite well. Well, I do see here that in the four games against Geary in a match that they played, that Geary played Queen B6 and you know, Nepo tried different moves like Queen D2 and also played Knight B3 in a couple of games. But given that all four of the games ended in a draw, we can sort of say that, well, Black was able to hold his own quite successfully. There were some games also where Nepo played Queen F3, especially when he was a bit younger. But it seems like he was mainly playing this move in Blitz games, so I don't think he's likely to do it in a World Championship match because f4 is more critical. Uh, he's also had some games recently against knight bd7, but that's a line where he's had pretty good results for the most part, so I don't really see Carlson playing this way against him as I struggle with drawing proper arrows. Anyway, uh, I guess it is true that there are other lines he can play. I remember he used to play to move bishop to e3 a lot as a junior, but I don't think he's quite likely to do it now, because the last time he played this was 2013. He did have a recent game where he played this move of bishop to e2 against Geary, but that game, or actually he did this in a blitz game against uh, a Russian GM. But again, they're probably not that likely that he goes for this in a, a World Championship match. That being said, he has had a lot of games in the past the past where he has played the move H3, where he was doing this a fair bit. Well, he did this actually in two games against Carlson in 2020. That being said, he did lose both of those games, where one of the games Carlson played G6, and you know, Carlson perhaps didn't equalize out of the opening, but he outplayed Nepo later. And the other game we had e5 and you know, Nepo used to play the approach with knight d2, this sort of old main line, you know, like h5, g3. He has some experience in these positions and has had 
pretty good results, but nowadays pretty well known that he's lined to just equal. So Nepo played knight b3 against Carlsen, but Carlsen played bishop to e7, and and in the end, Carlsen kind of just outplayed Nepo, I think, in this game. I believe this is a blitz game or a rapid game, judging from the time it was played. But yeah, knight b7, Carlsen brought the knight to f8 and g6, just having a very good grip over those kingside dark squares. And in the end, Nepo just really struggled to come up with a good plan in this case. So I think on that basis, well, it is worth pointing out that Nepo is not limited to playing the open Cillian, that he does have some games where he has played bishop b5. In fact, in 2020, he has actually played bishop b5 a bit, although not as much as d4. There's kind of an anti-knight off that if you don't want to allow the knight off, then bishop b5 is kind of the best way to avoid the knight off as such within 1e4. And after knight to d7, well, again, Nepo has played a few different moves. He had a couple of recent games of a4, although these were mainly blitz games. So I think it's more likely the either plays the move castles, which is what he did against Carlsen, with the idea that if knight f3, 6, you can go rook e1, and then meet a6 with bishop f1 and kind of switch the play back toward a nice Marocci bind where your bishop is kind of out of the way of your pieces and some of Black's moves like a6 and knight d7 may not fit perfectly in the new Marocci bind structure that is forming. Uh, so, in any case, I think that, yeah, there are a few moves why I can play. You know, Nepo also played the move d4 a lot in 2020, again, with some reasonable results. But it does seem to be a line where, in general, well, it's something I think Carlson will probably also be reasonably happy. And there's also, I think, a game... I thought there was a Carlson game where he played bishop d7, but apparently not. But Nepo score against bishop d7 is a lot better than against knight d7. So, I think what is we can sort of wrap up the e4 lines for the most part. We can kind of see that, well, Nepo has played a lot of different systems and he has a few different lines within 1e4. But we can see that against certain systems he just plays the same line most of the time. Just being very confident, being able to play those positions well and being very happy with them. And obviously he has a lot of variability where he tries different lines and, you know, sort of managed to combine sort of the positives of his creativity without sacrificing the depth of his opening preparation in the process. Now, it is true there are other moves that, he, of course, that can be played, but I don't really see Carlson relying on a move like C6 or a move like E6 in a World Championship match. In the case of the French, Nepo normally plays D4, D5, Knight, C3, thing is, Nepo also has played the French quite a lot with Black, including in some quite recent games. So to me, it would seem like probably a strategic mistake to play the French against someone who's played the French a lot of their career as such, because they're going to know the positions very well with both sides. And I also remember that there was a game between... Uh, it's, uh, maybe yeah, there's a game actually between MVL against Nepomnishi, but I'll talk about that in the Nepomnishi as Black. But it's a line where in general, why it's, he's had pretty good results. And against the Karakhan, actually, Nepo's played a few different systems. He's sort of changed quite a lot. I noticed in Blitz games, he's played this Knight F3, D5, D3 system quite a lot lately. And he actually has very, very good results with this. So if Carlson does decide to play the Karakhan and surprise him in one game, it wouldn't surprise me to see Nepo play D3 and just play this end game. Where, yeah, the end game is maybe objectively close to equal. But where White has his very straightforward plans like Knight FD2, A4, F3... It's very easy for White to improve his position, and definitely it's the end game that I can tell him the Pomishi is very comfortable in, because he scores very well with it. Now, more often it's true, historically, he's played D4, D5, and you know, he's mainly played the advanced variation, because this is the main line, at a higher level, and you know, he used to play H4 a lot, the tile variation, but now he mainly plays the short system, and I'm not going to go deeper except to point out that he does seem to be somewhat partial to playing a pro to an early C3, for example, knight e7, c3 is a move what he often likes to play just to try to avoid black playing c5 so easily. But again, I don't think we're going to see this in the World Championship match because I just don't see Carlsen playing the move uh, c6. At least not in more than one game. <clears throat> now, it's worth pointing out that actually in recent games, Nepo has broadened his opening repertoire. Where in quite a few games in 2021, he's actually played this move of c4. It's true, he's also played moves d4, knight f3, and b3 in 2021, but he's only played them in a few games, and his results weren't really that great with them for the most part. I think he was only playing b3 in blitz games, so I think unlikely he will probably do this in a match. But c4 is something he's actually been playing quite a lot in 2021 and 2020. Now, on the one hand, it may well be because, well, I want to hide my preparation for Carlson, so I'm just going to play c4 in some games to keep him guessing. But C4's also approach in Nepo has actually had very, very good results with lately. 
it's the sort of thing where sometimes you play, this is my own experience, sometimes I've played a system that's sort of high what high do I will play in an actual tournament, but I just have such amazing results with the system that's sort of my hiding system. Then I'm actually playing it in a tournament as well, because, well, it just seems to suit me and my opponents just don't really like it whatsoever. So that has happened to me before. I'm not sure if that's going to happen here. The thing with C4 is that after knight f3, after knight f6, well, normally Nepo has played the move knight c3 in the past, and, well, in this case, after e5, if we take this transition to c4, e5 territory, it's kind of interesting to see how Nepo has varied his moves at this point, because he used to play the move g3 mostly, but he hasn't really done this in the last couple of years. He had one game of this against Geary where he won in 2020, but I think probably not a likely indicate what he will do in the future. But more recently, he's been playing the move e4 a lot more. He played this e4 Nimswitch system quite a lot in uh, in 2020 with pretty good results. Although I noticed he stopped playing it after Geary beat him with bishop b4, d3, d6, and you end up playing this system with a3, and kind of the idea is that you grab some space, and you end up also getting the bishop pair. But at the same time, you also have this weakness on d4 to deal with, and basically the position is just fine for black. But yeah, Nepo had a couple of losses in this line that I guess convinced him not to play this away in the future. And so in more recent games, he played a couple of games against Giri with d4 to end in draws. And he also played the move e3 in a game in 2021. Although I think this game was probably a rapid game against Wesley, so it didn't seem all that convincing to me. So I think that if he's going to play c4, I have a feeling it's perhaps more likely that he plays it the way he's been doing so mostly in 2021 which is using the g3 move order. Now it's true, he sometimes played the move knight f3 and then g3, because when you play g3, you are sort of committing yourself to the theme Kato, where, say, if they played g3, say, c6, for example, which actually happened in a Nepo Carlson game in 2020, well, you kind of get this position where you're already committed to knight f3, g3, bishop g2, whereas, let's say, if you play knight f3 and if they go c6 now, then yeah, you have some extra options that are not involving g3, like knight c3 and e3. So playing knight f3 on move 2 is a little bit more flexible in, to some extent. But if you know you're going to play g3 anyway, then I guess you can play it like that. And if they go e6, for example, then yeah, you get this kind of neo-Catalan setup where Nepo has been having some pretty good results lately. Most opponents have played d take c4. And now very impressively, Nepo has actually scored 5 out of 5 with queen a4 at this point, where... I sort of noticed he started playing this in this game against Alexienko in the 2021 Candidates, where in that game, Alexienko played knight bd7, but he kind of fell into a difficult position very quickly, where Nepo played queen c2, getting out of the way of b5, attacking the queen. Then c5, knight c3, and Nepo was just able to transpose into a very good version of a Catalan with d4 takes takes, where the bishop is very strong, the queen is quite passive, the bishop on c8 in particular is quite passive here. And Nepo just won very, very convincingly. And I feel like that was a game that maybe convinced Nepo that perhaps he should play the system more often with the white pieces. Because he just is having very, very good results with it. And of course, if black plays g6, then yeah, you are committed to the uh, the Fiend Keto system. But with knight c3, you are avoiding the Grunfeld with d5. And you know, c6, you can go e4. So it's kind of a nice point. And in some recent games... Nepo has been playing this approach with d4 and just transposing. Well, in one game he played e4 against Mamad Jarov, but I think in a blitz rapid game, so probably not that big an indicator. But he did have some recent games where he was playing this uh, this Fiend Keto system. Uh, actually, I'm so curious to see just from the knight f3 move order what he's doing into g6. So yeah, he's been mainly playing knight c3 and basically using this to either transpose back into a King's Indian, but kind of avoid the Grunfeld where by playing like d5 and he's played the move h4 against Fiddler in a game in 2021, that there aren't really enough games, I guess, to really determine how he might follow it up in general. But he has sort of shown a certain flexibility in being able to play c4 both as an independent system and times to try again to better versions of other openings like a Catalan or a Grunfeld or such. Now, I guess also it is worth pointing out there are other moves that can be played. A move like c5, for example, definitely as symmetrical English as possible. In this case, I noticed that Nepro's main just been going knight f3 and just knight c3, and if they play knight c6, which is what he mostly faced lately, then he seems to favor this move at d4, just going for a very open position. And now his pet line is to play the move pawn a3, 
which he actually had a win against Anand with this in uh, 2021, I think in a rapid or blitz game. Then in A3, you're just stopping bishop b4. So it makes it much easier to get an e4 and just take over the center. And if bishop b5, c5, you go knight b3, and you can kind of either kick the bishop back, or just go e4 and again get this kind of Marachi bind structure, where maybe the black knight is not ideal on c6 in the middle game, and would perhaps be a bit more flexible on d7. Anyway, I've gone pretty deep into the different ways that Nepo plays his white. It's been a bit of a long video, but I think to summarize, I had to make a bold prediction as to what Nepo is most likely to play in the match. I feel like he's very comfortable in systems like the Royal Lopez, where his systems like playing the lines with meeting a6 with bishop a4 and that 6d3 system, or meeting the Berlin with the main line just castles d4 and entering the Berlin endgame. That seems like something it's quite possibly could go for. But I think something like the Scotch is something that he has scored very well with in the past. I think that if he's thinking specifically what will be most unpleasant for Carlson, then that could be one line where he may decide to go for this and try to show some ideas, set some problems. At least maybe in one or two games, perhaps, to keep him guessing. I personally don't think he's going to play systems like F4, Knight C3, because I think that these systems are more like gimmicky ones for Blitz, and he's just playing this to hide preparation. And if Carlson goes for the Sicilian, I think that Nepro is probably going to stick to his guns for the most part. I think we're going to see open Sicilians, probably either the maybe even a knight d5 on move 7, or just playing the main line against bishop g5 against Sveshnikov, or if we see the knight off. I really don't think Carlsen is going to play the knight off, because I think that, again, it's Nepo's main system against 1e4, with the white piece, uh, with the black pieces, so I think it's very unlikely that you would play your opponent's own best system against them, because they're just going to know the positions very well. And for a similar reason, I don't think Carlsen is going to play the French, and Karakhan seems a bit too fringe, I think, to rely on in a world championship match. So, and finally, of course, it's possible that Nepo may play c4. I don't think Nepo is going to play c4 in the whole match, but he might play it in maybe one game or two games, perhaps if he's not getting any headway with e4. Then he might play c4 as kind of an alternative just to see what Carlson is kind of relying on and seeing if he can maybe target him a bit with move orders to get him into an uncomfortable position. But I think that for the most part, we're probably going to see e4 main lines and we'll see what happens from there. So that's all for this video. Congrats on making it through to the end. Do leave a comment below with your thoughts. What do you think Nepo is going to play against Carlson in the World Championship match? And I will see you in the next video.